Lydia's going to do a session on virtual open days, which um, there was some virtual open days um, available um, before the, the current situation we're in now, um, but not anywhere near the amount that, that is available to us now. So Lydia's session is going to be brilliant. So it's going to introduce them, um, tell you more about them. And of course, you can find out more details and, and book onto open days on you taste days as well. So Lydia, without further ado, I'll pass the floor to you, please. So yeah, I'm from the University of Portsmouth. My name's Lydia. I'm going to um, speak to you all today about how to make the most of a virtual open day. Um, so obviously at the moment, it's probably really frustrating for all of you. Uh, July open days have been cancelled or postponed. Um, and obviously we're not sure when we'll all be able to invite you back onto our campuses for you to have a look around. So what some universities are doing at the moment is actually giving you the opportunity to um, have a look around in a virtual sense. So I'm going to give you some tips today to actually help you out and see how you can make the most of those, of those virtual events. So what is a virtual open day? Um, it's new to all of us as well, so I'm sure it'll be new to you. Um, but it is basically an alternative to visiting a university in person. Um, it still gives you all the, the chance to compare universities as well, obviously one from another if you're considering uh, obviously five universities. It gives you, still gives you the chance to compare and contrast those. Um, it will also help you to give you an insight into university facilities because they'll be um, distributing videos, there'll be imagery, and there'll probably be uh, virtual tours that you can do of, camp of the campus and of the accommodation facilities. Um, so there's plenty going on. It's just obviously not um, in a real sense, but it'll, it's still all delivered to you virtually. Um, so it's an alternative way of looking at universities. So what is actually the benefit of attending a virtual open day? Well, much the same as kind of attending a normal one, really. But I suppose the biggest one is that it takes away the, uh, the personal and financial commitments at the moment that you probably all have. Um, in the sense that obviously traveling to universities that might be further away from you that you're considering is actually quite a lot of money to get there. It sometimes includes an overnight stay if the open day if open starts early and you need to get there for certain talks or lectures or things like that or accommodation or... Uh, campus tours so it takes away the pressure really of traveling and the financial um, commitment to that as well obviously attending a virtual open day still gives you opportunity to have a look at different accommodation options as well and actually um, using virtual tours you can sometimes explore accommodation really well as well sometimes when you're on campus tours um, at a real open day because you're with other people there's kind of a bustle around everybody and it's sometimes difficult to get into rooms and have a look around properly before you again move on with the tour so sometimes when you're doing it in a virtual sense you can really get a grasp of how big rooms are what they include and um, look at kitchens shared facilities those sorts of things as well it will give you the opportunity to also uh, find out obviously more information about the course and details about um, the program that you want to study in more detail. You'll be able to send in questions to staff, ambassadors, lecturers, um, and actually have those questions answered as well. Again, sometimes on open days, just due to how busy they are, um, you sometimes don't always get the chance to ask the questions that you want to. Um, you might need to call up when you get back and feel like you haven't had some of your questions answered. Um, so in this, in a virtual sense, there will always be somebody on the open day that can answer your questions for you. So that's really positive as well. And obviously virtual open days, the same as a normal open day, it's there to check that the university course is right for you and that the university is right for you as well. So all those things are really important. So the kind of preparation that you can do before a virtual open day, Again, very much the same as if you were um, attending a normal one, really. You need to make sure that you are um, researching the course that you're really interested in properly and making sure that you do that really important uh, kind of nitty gritty research as well about modules, um, assessment, um, also social prospects, things that you'll be able to do on your course, um, year abroads, placement years, all those sorts of things that you need to actually find out about the degree program before you go to an open day. So UCAS will be fantastic for that. So they're like a massive search engine really for all of the courses in the UK. Um, you might have had the opportunity before um, lockdown to actually attend HE or careers fairs as part of your schools or colleges as well, which has hopefully have helped if you're able to pick up prospectuses. Of course, university course pages are going to be the most up to date for all of you with all the most up to date information with regards to their, with their with their program so if you could go onto university course pages specifically that's going to be really um, useful and other places like um, Jen mentioned Unifrog as well and um, obviously if you use that as part of your school or college then that will be a really useful research tool and research engine as well you've got a way of comparing universities so things like the Guardian University Guide the Complete University Guide and um, they will give you league table positions for universities and how well they're ranked according to the 
according to courses and obviously their overall ranking as institutions as well but it's a good way to compare and contrast universities regarding obviously where they sit for the course you want to study you've got play things like uni stats and discover uni as well they give you specific statistics um, on the course you want to study so how many students are in employment after six months or um, how many students um, how what their current salary will be after six months those sorts of things other sources that you can use to actually find out about virtual open days obviously you've got opendays.com you need taste days again that the platform that you're accessing this on at the moment it's a fantastic um place to go to find out all about where you, virtual open days are happening taste days as well applicant days potentially um so all that information is shared in a central place on uni taste days you've got the student room as well or from obviously from um, students' perspective, they can tell you about the university that they currently attend. So that's usually run by alumni. And you can also talk to students who um, are thinking about going to that, that university like you. And obviously you've got all of your social media platforms as well, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, and Twitter to get in touch with people. So preparing for virtual open days, there's plenty that you can be um, thinking about, but it's kind of like a little timeline really to prepare you, I suppose. Um, so firstly, narrow down your subject area of interest. So obviously Gem was talking about this a minute ago with personal statements and talking about you need to know specifically what it is about your course that you're really interested in. What is it about that particular subject? And that will obviously help you narrow down where you want to actually visit in terms of virtual open days. Check when they're being held. They'll, most of them, most universities, if they're holding a virtual open days, they will actually have them on their websites at the moment. They'll be um, advertising them quite a lot and marketing them to all of you. So make sure you just, just go on university websites and have a look and see what they're offering. Book onto the event if you need to. Most universities will need you to book onto their virtual events. Um, so they obviously know that you've attended and also this, so they can send you information afterwards as well that, they might, that you might find useful. Following universities that you're interested in on social media for updates is great and um, they'll be using those platforms at the moment to really uh, show you guys what it's like to study at that university. Obviously, if they can't have you in person, they're going to do as much as they possibly can on their social media um, platforms to kind of um, engage you and help you with your decisions. Preparing questions, which I'll come on to in just a minute, and also making a plan for your virtual open day as well, a checklist of things that you definitely want to find out about during your time. So shortlisting five top five questions i would say five questions for student for staff members and five questions for ambassadors and as i said there will be people on um, the virtual open day where you can easily ask them um, anything you want to know about so for questions about your degree potentially questions you might want, uh, want to ask staff members uh, lecturers course leaders anybody that is giving you the information how will you learn? So will it be based in, um, if we see if you're doing science-based programs, will it be labs predominantly? Uh, will it be seminars and lectures? How will you be assessed? Is it mostly going to be coursework focused or will it, some of it be exam um, based? What facilities are available when you're actually learning at that university? Will it be industry standards facilities? So will, they, will it be like it would be in industry in real life? Will you be being prepared using practical experiences and simulated experiences so you know what it's like in the real world? Um, if you are interested in studying abroad, um, then what are the opportunities to study abroad as part of that programme? And where are that university's partner universities? So where in the world are they connected to other unis? So whereabouts in America might they have partnerships or in Japan, for example? If you're interested in doing a placement year, so an industry-based year where you take a whole year out to just um, work for a year in a particular industry, where which placements uh, do students typically go for as part of that at that university and also what support can the careers teams offer you as a student to actually find those placements as well because it can be quite difficult to do that so you need to make sure you're well supported and also in general if you struggle um, financially academically or in, in terms of your own well-being at university um, who can you go to to actually speak to as well um, and what support services are available i'll come on to that in just a moment though Questions you might want to ask ambassadors, are lecturers supportive? Obviously speak to them because they will be genuine, they are receiving the experience at the moment. So they're going to be really useful to, for you to gauge what it's like to be a student at that university. Um, you might want to ask them how much contact time they have on their course. So how much of it is obviously they're sat in seminars and lectures and how much time is it independent learning? Um, do they have opportunities for practical learning or is it all mostly textbook focused? Again, this will depend entirely on the course that you want to study, but it's really, it's really worthwhile asking those questions. And then also in terms of the social side and actually being a student at that university, like what are the halls of accommodation going to be like? How do they find the city? Um, is it fun? Is there lots to do? Is it easy to get involved in student societies and the student union? 
especially perhaps if there's a particular society that you want to get involved in because it's something you currently do at the moment um, outside your school or college for your, in your spare time. You don't want to give that up. You want to find out you know, what the swimming society is like if you're a keen swimmer, those sorts of things. So those are the types of questions you can ask ambassadors. And again, if they've either done a year abroad or a placement year, you might want to find out about how the university, that university specifically supported them during that time as well. So actually attending the virtual open day, so you've done all your preparation, you've prepped all your questions, what happens then? I would definitely suggest that you have a quick checklist, make sure you've got a good Wi-Fi connection, you've got a notebook and a pen to jot down some, um, some questions or some answers that you're given. Make sure you've got a quiet room where you're not going to be easily, easily disturbed with good lighting. Um, you've got those prepared questions ready and that you've also got an email address that you're willing to give universities so that they can contact you um, after the virtual open day about information to do with the course you're interested in. Um, and I put snacks there because you never know how long you're gonna be on a virtual open day and having a look around, so it's well good to be well prepared with food. <laughs> so find out about loads of different things. Subject details is gonna be your most important thing on a virtual open day. You need to find out about module content, how the course is assessed, how it's taught, uh, what are your opportunities for work placements or just any type of work experience during that program as well. Um, any practical facilities that are available, obviously if you are going to go into more of a practical based job, you're going to need um, to be prepared for that and make sure that university is preparing you for that while you're at that, you know, while, you're, while you're studying um, so that you are more employable effectively once you've left university so practical facilities are important halls of residence yep definitely find out about halls where you're going to be living is really key um, to your experience of university making sure that you're happy and comfortable and um, are they clean uh, what's it like sharing with other people those sorts of things the student union as well so what type of societies you can get involved in and the sport and exercise facilities that there are as i said if there's something really particular that you're interested in or want to carry on with you at university uh, that's your time to ask those questions as well and see what the facilities are like and also you might want to inquire about study spaces i don't know what what is the library like i mean as a student personally i didn't use the library too much other than to get books out and things that i needed for my course i used my study bedroom a lot as part of my kind of study space um but you might want to know what the what the library is like how big is it how many students can it fit in it uh, is there any other study hubs throughout the university where you'd be able to work um that's also important as well and again, I have mentioned it very briefly, but does the university have certain support services? Um, it's important for all of you that when you go to university, you know that you're not just going to be dropped in at the deep end and then kind of left um, to muddle your way through things. So there should be support services in place for you when you become a student. Um, it's daunting moving away from home. The academic jump from a school or college to a university level of study is difficult. Um, and so you need to make sure that there are people there that can help you. So academic support services are important if you're struggling with your studies making sure that there's any additional support and disability advice. So if you have any learning difficulties or disabilities that you notify universities of those prior to attending um, so that they can make sure that everything's ready for you and any um, additional equipment that you might need. So ask questions about that too. Careers and employability. Um, basically is services that help you to um, brush up your CV, help you prepare for interviews. And some universities also have employability and career services that you can use up to five years after graduating as well to help you with any, um, with any future employment opportunities. So that's really important. Um, again, I have mentioned wellbeing. If you struggle at all at university with any personal, personal issues that you might have, the wellbeing services are there to help you with that. Keeping healthy with regards to the gym perhaps um, and the leisure facilities there might be at that university housing support if you're looking to live somewhere in your second and third year with private rented accommodation you might need some advice and guidance around that and if perhaps you're struggling financially or you need some help with your finances you want to know a little bit more about how um what's going to happen with your student finance application next year those sorts of things then finance and money might also be a concern and you might want to speak to somebody and have some support regarding that and then if there's also spaces that are important for you for reflection, thought and prayer, it's important that you find a university that, um, that offers you those spaces to do so. So there's just a few things. You might not necessarily think about it at the moment, but I certainly wish I'd probably, I mean, my university was fab in, in, her, in helping me with all these support areas, but it wasn't something that I actually sought, sought and looked for um, when I was looking around university. It was, it was my, my parents that kind of um, encouraged me to look at those sort of things. So make sure that you are doing your research in those areas as well. What about the location? So just coming to the end of this kind of um, kind of your virtual open day, thinking about where you actually might like to be. This is really difficult um, for a university to obviously show you what the location will be like on a virtual open day. 
Um, but the city that you might be living in is equally as important perhaps as the university you attend because it's that type of experience that you're getting from where you're living. So again, how many social activities are available to you within that city? Um, that will probably depend on how big it is, um, what facilities are available around the city as well. The size of the city, but also the size of the university that you're going to be attending. If it's a large city, obviously there'll be tons to do, um, but the university might be quite large as well. Portsmouth's a medium sized city, I would say, we're fairly big, um, but our student cohort is about 25,000, so we're a medium sized university. But other universities have, have students, have a larger cohort of students, so that might be a question to ask. How affordable is it to live in a city? Um, how affordable is it to live at that university? Well, how expensive are the halls of, of residence and also just general living, food, those sorts of things? Um, is it more expensive in one place that you've looked at than another? And that can be part of your comparison too. And also how good are the transport links from the university's location? So if it is a um, base in a city, it's likely to have good transport links. If you're further away, perhaps out of a city location, it might require a couple of bus journeys and then a train to get you home or anywhere else you want to be. And actually how expensive is it as well to get back um, to university and back home if you wanted to. So all those things are really, uh, really key as part of your research on your own virtual open day. Reflecting after your visit then, just a few things to think about. Is the teaching and assessment of the course suitable for you? Do the social provisions suit your preferences? Is it what you want? Does it feel lively and bustling enough? Did you get a good vibe from the students that you spoke to? What was the availability, standard and cost of the different accommodation options? That is important. You obviously need to make sure that you're, it's gonna be, allow for the budget that you have for when you go to university. Um, and what, was, um, what were the facilities like at the university in general? How did you feel they came across in your virtual tours of the campus and the accommodation? Um, what was your initial perception of it as well? The ultimate question I suppose to finish on though is can you see yourself living and studying there for at least three or four years of your life? Again, it's so hard to gauge on a virtual open day, but it is a really good starting place to find out some information about your degree, about what the, the support services are like, the facilities, and what current students think about it and what staff members, what information they can give you as well. But what I would definitely encourage you all to do, if of course you're, if you do attend a virtual open day and your questions aren't answered on the day, Universities will have admission services that you can speak to. Um, you, would, you can easily find that information on their websites. Um, even if you just type in admissions at such and such university, it will come up as a search engine on, on Google, as a search thing on Google. So you'll be able to find um, people that you're looking for. So that's about all from me. I hope you all do sign on to virtual open days. As I said, they're a really great starting point, even if obviously you can't get the, the right vibe or the right feel of a university, it's a really good place to start your research and hopefully we'll be able to have you all back on our campuses um, to look around uh, potentially in the autumn term or definitely next year. Right, John, I'm gonna pass back to you now then. Thank you Thanks, very Olivia. much. Brilliant. Uh, I learned loads about virtual open days um, from that session. I, I, I thought I knew a fair bit, um, but didn't. Snacks, always a good recommendation. I knew I forgot sitting for this one today. Um, snacks are always good and thank you also for the uni taste days mention um, they do that so that's wonderful